What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how many trees we can render inside of SketchUp and Inkscape before you start having gigantic system issues. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna start by giving ourselves a little bit of area to put our trees on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use sandbox tools in order to create an area. And by the way, I have no idea what the answer is for this. So we'll all find out together how many trees we can actually handle. So I'm gonna start by drawing a sandbox. We're gonna draw a big sandbox. One thing to note about this, by the way, is don't do this in 10 foot increments. I already tried that and SketchUp didn't like that. So we're gonna do this in 50 foot increments. And I'm going to basically draw this a mile long. So 5,000. 280 feet and then we're gonna do the same thing over here at 5,280 feet so something like this so this creates a pretty massive grid in here but it's gonna give us enough room that we can kind of place our trees on the surface and so um, there shouldn't really be too much of a hit in making this into terrain using the uh, using the smooth function. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna start off and I'm just gonna reverse all of these faces. And then let's go ahead and let's use the smooth function. You know, we're gonna give this a radius of like 2000 feet, just to give us some hills right here, right? So, so that way, if we render this out and we do kind of a lower view, in here we'll be able to get our camera down here so that our hills actually like fill out the background like this one thing when you're pushing the limits on sketchup like this that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you save often so we're going to go ahead and we're going to save so we're just going to save this as trees file all right and so one thing to remember when we're doing something like this is you're really kind of fighting against um, the sketchup engine or really any 3d modeling you're fighting against their ability to show a certain amount of geometry right because every tree every model that you bring in um, has a certain number of edges and faces in it and at some point it's just too much for your engine to handle right so let's say for example that I was just to jump into the landscape component section of the 3d warehouse and let's say that we were to bring in, we'll go with the low poly plants from SketchUp right now, but if we were to bring one of these in, and we'll say that we did one of these low poly trees. So let's go with this evergreen magnolia tree, right? And then bring it into SketchUp. And so when we bring this in, if we look at this model, notice how it's comprised of edges and faces. And if we were to come in here and look at these, notice how each one of these leaves is made up of nine entities, right? So there's nine entities in here. It's a face and then some edges. And so then within that, they have to be repeated over and over and over again. So there's 24 of these components in the model, not even counting the flowers. So if there's 24 of these and there's four plants per component, so let's say there's four plants per component, every plant has five leaves and every leaf has nine entities, right? So you've got 180 entities times 24, right? So just in the leaves, you've got 4,320 things that SketchUp has to display. And I think some of these are actually in here without the flower. So you might even have more than that. So there's another eight right here. So let's say conservatively that there's 5,000 edges and faces in this model. Well, if you think about it, every time you copy this, you're adding an extra 5,000 ish plus the trunk and everything else, edges and faces to your model. So if we were to do that like five times, so using the array function right here, and then we were to go up and we were to look at our model info. So we go to model info, go to statistics right here. Notice how we've got 76,000 edges and 34,000 faces inside of our model, and then 8,000 component instances. So basically, what you need to be aware of is every time you add something in your model, you're making it bigger. And so we need to be a little bit smart about the way that we do this, right? And notice how these are even trees that aren't gonna render out very well, right? If I was to render this, this is not gonna look very good. So you need to be very careful with what you're bringing into your model. And that's where using extensions 
gets really important. All right, so based on the number of geometry that's shown with just this one tree, obviously it's a non-starter to just copy this tree, you know, 100,000 times inside of this model, right? You'd have way too much geometry, SketchUp wouldn't be able to handle it. What we need instead is we need a tool for placing the objects on our surface, so something to randomize, as well as something to place that isn't going to crash our computer with too much geometry. So I'm gonna be using the extension Scatter, so it has two things. It has a tool that allows me to scatter objects along surfaces randomly and it also has access to the 3d bazaar so that's going to be really important because that's a library of different models um, that are render ready and so you can download things like plants and trees and other things like that and they come with proxies which are lightweight um, placeholder models that load into SketchUp and then the actual geometry gets loaded by your rendering program. So that's really important because it lets your rendering program do the heavy lifting. And so in this case all we want to do is we're just going to jump into the free assets and we just want to download the American Plane Tree pack right here. So you're just going to click on this. You want to make sure that you've selected the option for proxy and you want to go ahead and click on download. And then once we download that, we're going to be able to bring that into our scene and scatter it and start rendering. All right. So now we've got this downloaded. And if we jump over into our local section right here, notice how this will show all of the local things that I have inside of my model. And in this case, we want to click on this American plane tree option to bring this in. Now, this is a little bit weird because it tells us that some files are missing, but when you import them, it works fine. So I'm not really sure what exactly is missing, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring this in. And notice how you get a list of the different trees in here. And we specifically want to use the scatter composition that's in here. So that's going to add like random trees into our scene. So using the nine model variations that are in here. Note that I'm getting this weird error in here that files are missing, but they're actually in the folder. So I don't know why I'm getting that error. Everything works fine when I import it. So just know that, so if there are things in here that you do want to download, you can click in here and you can either just click on the import button or you can click on this in order to see more information. So for this one, for example, we're just going to click on the import button and that's going to import this into SketchUp. And so now if we jump back into our SketchUp file, notice what that did is that loaded this into scatter. And so what we want to do is we want to scatter these trees along this surface right here. Um, note that you want to make sure that you're in render only mode. So what that's going to do is it's going to generate those lightweight proxies. And so now let's say that we wanted to bring these in and scatter them along this surface right here. So I'm just going to click on the button to surface or scatter on, then I'm going to click on the surface right here. And so when we do that, notice how we get this big error message, right? And so basically what it's telling us is it's telling us that based on the settings that we had in here, this has exceeded the preview limit of 50,000, meaning there's more proxy models in here, um, more bounding boxes in here than it's set to show. That's in there to keep your computer from crashing by generating too much stuff. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on OK for right now and click on Done. And so notice how at the moment this placed 238,000 tree objects in our model. And so notice if I scroll out, right, obviously it's a little bit slow, but you can see how all of these tree objects have been placed in here. That seems like a little bit much to start with. So let's go ahead and let's bring our density down to maybe like something a little bit smaller. So maybe like 0 0.01 here. Okay, so that puts us at 3,900 objects. Let's go a little more than that. So maybe 0005. So now if I tab out of that, notice how that places 19,000 objects on this surface. But notice how they're being brought in as very lightweight boxes in here. And so they're not really slowing down my computer performance because it's just showing them as boxes. Well, what we can do is, again, make sure that you're set to render only because you only want these to show up and render fully inside of your rendering engine. But we're going to click on the button for generate. And so when we do that, what that does is that generates this composition. Well, now we can open up either Inkscape, Thea, or V-Ray. Um, in this case, I'm going to open up Inkscape and we can take a look at this. So if I click the play button right here to open up Inkscape, it's going to take a second to load everything in, but it's basically going to load in the real full geometry of those objects. And so if we look around in Inkscape, notice that this has basically loaded in the full geometry of those objects. So if I fly down and look at some of these trees like this, so if I kind of zoom into them, 
you can see how this is loaded in the full tree with the leaves inside of my rendering. And it's done that for all 20,000 trees. And notice how I'm able to fly around with these trees really easily. So um, right now, Inkscape, I mean, obviously my computer is heating up a little bit displaying all of this, but it's doing a great job of displaying these 20,000 trees. So we've got 20,000 trees. Let's see how many more we can do. Let's bump our density up. Um, instead of point 0 0.05, let's go to point 0.1 and then tab back out of this. So now, if I do that, let's go a little bit higher because we didn't really seem to be struggling with the 20,000 trees. So let's see if we can get up to maybe like 79,000 trees, like this. Remember that we need to click on the button for generate in order to do that. So we're gonna click on generate and then we're gonna jump back into Enscape. All right, and so you can see how with the 80,000 trees, we can still fly around in the Enscape viewport, but notice how it is noticeably slower. So you could definitely use this in order to render out a scene, but I would say that you are um, you are struggling a little bit more from a performance standpoint. That being said, I mean, I don't think that uh, it's definitely usable, and I think you definitely get a good result out of this. I mean, one thing I would recommend with something like this is until you do your final render, um, you'd want to set your visual settings to probably draft. So I would probably drop my visual settings down like this to a draft level so that it's not trying to render all of those at a super high level. And then we can do our final render um, with the full trees. But notice how it's handling these just fine. One other thing that you might do is you might want to set up your view inside of SketchUp before you bring this over. So this is slowing down, but there's nothing saying that we couldn't add more. All right. so. I'm thinking, let's go ahead and let's bump this up to 250,000 objects. So again, we're just gonna bump our density up and then we're just gonna generate this and we're gonna send it over to Enscape and take a look. So we'll generate this and then we'll send it to Enscape right here and then take a look at what that does. All right, so we're at 250,000 trees that got rendered in here and it seems to be going just fine. I can click and drag in order to look around, but it is kind of delayed. So you do have to kind of manage um, you, you do at this point kind of have to manage the views inside of SketchUp um, to keep this from getting really clunky, but it's displaying all 250,000 trees. So now let's jump this up to half a million and see what it does. All right, so we're up to half a million objects and there's a very real possibility that this will crash my computer. So um, we're gonna give it a try anyway. So I'm gonna click on the generate button right here and then we're gonna click on the button to resend the scene to Enscape. And so it's gonna export all of this additional geometry as well as all of the extra materials over into Enscape. And with the number that we added, I have a feeling that um, it's gonna take a little while. So we're gonna let this work for a bit. So I did get this error from Enscape at half a million objects. I'm gonna try clicking on ignore this error and continue to see what happens. And we got a bug splat. All right, so it looks like our limit on these trees is gonna be something like 250,000. That's still pretty good, especially considering the way that people say that SketchUp can't handle this amount of geometry. I, I know there's the thought that this is kind of a workaround and it is, but it's also a smart modeling practice. So you can definitely get something to render that high amount of geometry. You just have to be smart about the proxies and the low poly geometry that you're using in SketchUp before you send it to a rendering engine, just like with other programs. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this video if you want me to do more things like this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. So if you do want to learn more about Scatter, I will link to that on this page as well as to my course in case you want to learn how to use SketchUp. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.